Okay, this type of video is a little bit different than the normal pace. I haven't really done many videos in a very long time, and it's because I've been busy and crap. But quarantine's hitting everybody, and I figured I'd do something I haven't done here and all that. So for this video, I'm going to talk about just why Windows Vista was a pain. Now, there's videos out there of why... But I kind of want to give my opinion on the matter, um, since I have a few old computers, as you can see. I've got at least five in here. i got a, actually a few more um, in another room and in my closet just stored. I've got a lot of old computers. But I dug one of these out. Um, I installed Windows Vista on this computer over here. This computer is another Dell dimension from the Pentium 4 era. Uh, this is a 2400. Uh, this one's not hooked up, but it's, you know, it's it's actually running Windows 2000. And it's designed for XP. Um, this one is also from the Pentium 4 era. It was also designed for XP, but as I said, it's running Windows Vista. But to give an idea of why Windows Vista failed, I mean, we already know the system requirements for Vista were very high. This Pentium 4 is only a single core. Windows Vista wanted dual cores, at least a gig of RAM for 32-bit, and yeah, it, it, that was just to run smoothly. Now, this thing does have two gigs of RAM, and I actually got acquired this computer in 2015 and had two gigs of RAM when I got the machine. I don't know what it originally had. I have to enter the service tag. I don't think it had two gigs of RAM. I'm sure it was upgrade because it didn't have a power supply. Or the power supply was bad when I got the computer. I had to replace the power supply with a different computer, one that I had to part out earlier in that year. And the hard drive came out of a different computer that I parted out later on. Um, it's a 160 gigabyte Seagate drive, which I don't like Seagate at all. But let's turn this thing on just to give you an idea of what Windows Vista is like. It runs very hot because it's only it's a 3.2 gigahertz Pentium 4. Uh, the battery voltage, the clock battery is not very good in this thing. And the floppy disk, I don't know why it's not seeing it, but I don't really care. It doesn't stop the machine from working. Um, so this is a familiar scene. This is Windows Vista on a Pentium 4. I might just title this Windows Vista on a Pentium 4 in 2020. I don't know. Boots up very quickly. But I don't really do much with this computer except like I have to digitize some old tapes now and then. And the computer I used to use for it, it won't really work that well anymore it seems like. Not that long, it doesn't take that long to boot up. It's running Windows Vista Home Basic, that's all I had as an ISO. Um, that's all I had keys for. Uh, even if I didn't, I... I just don't have any other keys, and I didn't really feel like burning another ISO anyway. Even if I looked at had a Vista business key, I think I do. But nonetheless, um, we got Vista Home Basic. So you can see it booted up fairly quick on this machine, but it's also got a 3.2 gigahertz Pentium 4 and 2 gigs of RAM, which was a luxury back in 2006. 2000. This computer is from July 2006. So you can see it doesn't take that long to boot up. Um, but I also don't have very many programs installed. I have Bandicam, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, VLC Media Player. That's all I really have on this computer. Um, the real reason I put Windows Vista on this computer is actually because I needed Movie Maker, which does not come with Windows 7 and newer for some reason. Even though Windows 7 was pretty much... Windows 7 is pretty much Windows Vista Service Pack 2, but better. And I can notice the difference, because on this computer, this actually used to run Windows 7. I put, I originally was going to put Windows XP on it just to make it age appropriate, because I didn't really have much of a use for it when I first, you know, wanted to get it up and running. I just wanted to get it running, but I didn't have much of a use, so I just wanted to put Windows XP just to make it age appropriate. But the Windows XP setup would not detect my hard drive, which is to show the 160 gig Seagate drive. Um, it's got Pentium 4, 2 gigabytes. let's open system properties. 
it's running very hot because the power supply I actually took was out of a Pentium 3 computer, which I also think that power supply was replaced because it has SATA ports on it. It has IDE connectors too, but I, I took it out of a Pentium 3 computer that motherboard decided to die in July 2015. So I don't know if that power supply is very efficient, but it gets the, it gets the job done. And as you can see, yeah, it's running, it's Pentium 4, 3.2 gigahertz, 2 gigs of RAM. And it's activated. Um, it's Vista Service Pack 2, because, you know, RTM and Service Pack 1 were crap. I mean, you can see it runs Arrow perfectly fine, and we're running on a Pentium 4, 2 gigs of RAM. It doesn't even have a, it doesn't even have an XP Vista Capable system, uh, Vista Capable sticker. So... But I could see our problems back then. Manufacturers were definitely not prepared. And I'm probably repeating obvious facts. But this is just kind of a summary of, you know, just show that Vista can run. It runs on the right system. Like this one, it ran Windows 7 Service Pack 1, Home Premium Service Pack 1. Um, for about, I don't care about user account. I had to turn it off because it was getting so annoying. And Bandicam requires it every time and I just couldn't do it. And for what I'm using this computer for, I don't really care about user account control. I don't really use as much except for like digitizing uh, four by three videos, which is what I need a movie maker for. And Windows Live Movie Maker won't install these days, it seems like. And the computer I used to use had Windows 7. It was actually my main computer before it. This computer over here, which is an HP Envy. I got this in 2017 for absolutely free. Um, because the person who I got it from got another one after the screen cracked, but I don't mind. I don't care about the screen crack. It was a free computer and it runs fairly nice. Um, that computer, the one I used to use before, the Compaq, that, which I did mention it was a Compaq. It ran Windows Seven. It still has it. It's still the same install, but Moon Maker works, but it's too slow. It's got it's got a two fifty gig hard drive, but it's really slow. And it's it just not very fast anymore. Even for basic tasks like putting a DVD in the drive, which is what I need to do. I need to like put, convert my VHS tapes to DVD. And yeah. But you can see that the one thing I do like about Windows Vista is the internet and the email thing from Windows XP. I think that's pretty cool. But the Windows 7 taskbar is more usable than Windows Vista. And the other thing about Windows Vista, just another note, obviously Google Chrome is no longer supported, which we should know that. Um, something's going on with the internet. Um, it's either Windows, because I, I have all the updates installed. There's Firefox, which I don't think is up to date. No, I don't want to set it to stuff out right now. About Firefox, let's see what version it is. 27, yeah, it's not up to date. But this can only run up to 52.9 ESR. So that's one problem with Windows Vista um, because of its low usage, which I honestly don't blame people if you really think about it. Many systems, because they, this computer was obviously upgraded. I don't think this thing used to have two gigs of RAM. The Pentium 4 might have been original. I can look at the service tag, but I'm just kind of lazy too. But... A lot of systems at that time only had 512 megs of RAM at lucky at most one gigabyte. Windows Vista needed at least a gigabyte to run. I've run Windows Vista on very small amount of RAM. Now some computers handle it okay and some don't. This computer was not very happy with Windows Vista when I first installed it. It took absolutely forever to do anything. Once I installed all the updates though, it seemed to boot up, it, it boots up faster. Um. I've also installed Windows Vista on newer systems, like this Dell and Sprout 6, not this exact one, a different one. Um, it ran okay, it was 64-bit, obviously. Um, but it was also designed for Windows 7, because Windows 7, for whatever reason, just did not like that computer, for that other computer. And that computer, by the way, I don't have it in this fleet anymore, it's somewhere else. It runs Windows 10 now, and it actually runs fairly good. Um, but... You know, Windows Vista, like, when I actually started to use it, like, even back in, like, 2008 when I used it for, like, brief times, it really wasn't that bad. Most of the problems I ever had with Vista 
weren't even Vista's fault. The computers were fine, it just they couldn't connect to the internet. That was really the problems I had. It just, and I don't even think it was Vista's fault because I had other computers that wouldn't connect either in that same location I was in. But, I mean, I can see why a lot of people had problems with Vista. I mean, that's a service pack too, nobody cared anymore. Uh, people had already rolled back to Windows XP, and there are others that just weren't going to get a new computer until they saw Windows 7 come out. So this was why this computer got abandoned. I mean, you can see on a Pentium 4, it runs okay, but it's also an upgraded Pentium 4. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much just Windows XP and Windows 7, like the elements of XP, and, and you can see like the taskbar, very similar to XP. You know, and then the start menu. But it has a, a lot of the Windows 7 elements too. As, so it's kind of like both, but it's also in the middle, so it would make sense. Um, but Windows 7 really is Windows Vista. So you can thank Windows Vista for the success of Windows 7. Um, I know this is probably a redundant video, but I mean, that's what happens when you're in quarantine and you get bored. I just figured I'd show off this old. Pentium 4 running Vista, because actually I did have, do have a purpose for it. The other computer I had was an AMD Athlon X2 system. And I've got so many files on it, I can't reformat reinstall Windows. Um, it would probably fix the problem, but I fit too many files in crap. I don't really want to move around. I don't know who was messaging me. But, yeah. That computer I'm just going to sit in storage. That's what this one was doing, so I just decided I'm just going to run... Windows Vista. Windows 7 kind of throttles on all the computers I run it on. Like that Dell and Sprout 620 over here, that's actually running Windows 8.1, which I might, I will be making another video about. Just, you know, at some point you can see all my Windows disks. Vista, Windows 2000, Windows 8.1. And yeah, and the XP Home Service Pack 1, which that's going to be another video I do as well. But yeah, that's Windows Vista in 2020. I mean, Bandicam, the latest version, uh, does run on Vista, but surprisingly, they, su they dropped support for XP in 2015. Although XP, that was my other problem. I tried to just do the project on this power spec over here that's actually running Windows XP. It's from the Windows 7 era, but it was one of the last computers that came with Windows XP pre-installed. So it's kind of cool. I still have it on the original install of XP from when I got it. I haven't formatted or anything. I just deleted all the documents. Um, it runs very nice for what I needed to do. I mean, it's mainly because I need Office and I'm cheap. So, yeah. But I deleted all sensitive doc. That's what I do. All these computers I acquire, I always delete sensitive documents or reformat or both, just because you know I'm not a douchebag. Um, but yeah, I tried to do it on Windows XP and the codecs just weren't there. Windows Vista introduced all the codecs. So you really think about it, Windows Vista was kind of the foundation to why we had success with Windows 7. That's because Windows 7 actually did, Windows 7 was just Windows Vista Service Pack 2, but with a new look and better performance. That said, um... I mean, it looks the same, as I've mentioned many, many times. And yeah, um, there's not much I'm going to really demonstrate in this video. The internet, um, I don't care about that. Uh, the internet does run on here, but I mean, you saw that um, it, it's hooked up to the internet, but there's something wrong with the security or something. Probably the clock battery that's bad, it might be causing, I don't know. Um, if you have an idea, you can let me know in the comments, but... Otherwise, I'm just gonna leave it alone because I don't really, don't really have much of a use for this computer other than just to, for these occasional four x three videos I have to do. Um, and yeah, that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you for watching, and yeah, see you later.